Hi, this is Julian and welcome for this new tutorial on Photoshop. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks about depth of field and the tilt shift effect in Photoshop CC. So if you have an older version of Photoshop, you may not be able to use all the tools I'm going to be using. I think you uh, you will be you will need CC 2014, I think, to be able to use all the, um, the blur effects. Uh, I think some of them appeared in CS6, but it would be safe to to use CC or Superior, so you see CC 2014 and above. I'm using actually right now, I think it's CC 2017, and I'm recording this the day before Adobe Max, so probably at the end of 2017, we're going to have a new version of Photoshop. But anyway, uh, starting from 2014, you should have all the tools needed. So. I provide three photos you can download on my website. So if you're following on tutorial, you have all the files already packed for you. If you follow this tutorial on my YouTube channel, you have the link in the description down below where you can uh, find a link. You can um, just subscribe to my uh, newsletter and then you will receive the three files for free. So the files are in CR2 format, I think. Uh, so they are raw files. The files you're uh, viewing right now, they are developed, so I just boosted the colors a tiny bit so it's a bit more interesting, so there is no magic behind it, it's just the original are a bit more desaturated, um, a bit more boring actually, so I just saturated the colors, but it doesn't affect, um, there is no consequence on what I'm going to show you about the tilt shift effect. So this photo, for example, is a good example of what we can do in post-production. The focus is on the bee inside uh, the flower, it's in the center of the picture and because I use an aperture of 4 the depth of field is a bit short so it means everything that is in front of it is going to be blurry and everything that is behind it is going to be blurry as well and this is on like 20 maybe 30 centimeters distance so it's a very short depth of field. it's not immensely short like if I had a lens with an aperture of 1.2 for example it would be a lot smaller uh, so what we're trying to achieve here, uh, what I'm trying to show you, is what if we wanted an even more, an even shorter depth of field, something really, really, really short. Um, obviously, a lens with uh, such a small aperture, or I would say a wide aperture, it, it, it costs money, right? Like if you if you have a Canon, uh, for me it's a 2400 meter, uh, 200 meter, <laughs> 100 millimeter uh, L. A lens is not really uh, cheap, but it's not immensely expensive. Now, if I had the 85mm 1.2, this is really expensive. It's almost 2,000 uh, uh, euros. It's pretty much the same in US dollars, so it is expensive. It's almost twice the price of what I have. What if I want to mimic the effect of an 85mm uh, 1.2, although my aperture is 4? Okay, so we're trying to do this. Let's go to Filter, and we have the Blur Gallery. And what we're trying to do is the field blur. So with this, with this, I can put a point and then increase the blur. The problem is field blur is going to affect the entire picture. What I want is to be able to control a point in the front, one in the middle and one at the back. So field blur may seem to be a good, um, a good value, but what we would need is to duplicate the layer, use a layer mask, so we have this version masked for the middle and not for the foreground and the background. But actually, if we use tilt shift, although we're not going to be doing a tilt shift, when I increase this and I switch to tilt shift, then I have what I want because I can have something that is for the foreground, for the background, and then something in the middle. So let's increase the value so you can see what's going on here. So now I have a blur going from this point to this point. And from this to this, so let's increase the uh, the feather. Uh, maybe the zoom is not really good, so let's use Control minus on the keyboard. So now I think we're getting there. So now we have the effect of a really wide aperture. Let's maybe do this. So it's really focused on the bit in the middle. and even closer okay really close 
at this point it is pretty difficult to move uh, the um, the entire mask and I'm gonna adjust the feather so now we have a focus range that is really concentrated on this part of the picture so it's not exactly what it, lo it would look like on an um, 85 millimeter 1.2 but it's closer definitely closer than a4 so tilt shift although it's not really um, made for this kind of picture it is working better if you want to mimic this kind of lens okay so if i click ok it's going to be uh, rendered by the gpu actually so these filters are going to be rendered by gpu so if you have a good gpu in your machine um, well you have a shorter render time so it would be even better to uh, use um, a smart object so first I should before going to tilt shift I should right click and do convert to smart object and now if I use the tilt shift again it will be put as a smart filter and it means I can control it uh, in a non-destructive way so I go to filter blur gallery and as you can see my last settings they have been saved so I just have to click OK and then because I'm on a smart filter, I can now first activate or deactivate. And if I want to change my mind about the settings, I can just I can just double click on blur gallery and change my mind. So if I want a really short depth of field, I can do this if I want. Okay, and click OK up there in the window. So this is a really cool way to mimic a different lens and have a really short depth or feel like it looks like 1.2 or 1.4 although it's been taken with a 1 uh, with a 4 uh, f4 aperture with a 24 105L Canon lens which is a lot cheaper than the 85 1.2 it's not as good but you can try to mimic the effect right so let's move to this one and this is where we're gonna achieve a proper tilt shift like as if it was uh, a reduced scale uh, something you would do with the um, with the model scale and I'm gonna go to blur gallery again and because it's been taken from above this is where it's gonna work and looks like as if it was a really tiny model small scale version of London which is not okay it's been taken in the London sh um, I think let me yeah I think it's been taken from the London shard uh, uh, next to, uh, to the London bridge so this is obviously where you can have a really good view from above in London. There is also the um, the London Eye, but you can get a lot higher up uh, with the London Shard and also in the BT Tower in the very central of London. So now as you can see, um, it looks like it's a model scale of a uh, version of London, but it's not. It's maybe a bit too much, so if you want to change the setting again, you can adjust. And before that, I think it's better to do a convert small object, otherwise it's done. So if you save this version, well, it's written on the file, so you can't go back. So make sure if you're not sure, if you're not sure what you'll be doing, if you want to change your mind, just convert to smart object beforehand. And then if I go back to filter blur gallery, let me um, go a bit less crazy on the setting. I think it's going to work better for us. And yeah maybe going a bit more for the up and increase now the settings okay i think it works better now i'm gonna click ok but because i'm on a small object again i can change my mind i can save the file open it again change my mind it's okay if you just if you apply the filter on the very basic layer that's it you can change your mind because you can do Control alt z but if you save it like this, you won't be able to go back. Okay, so this is a proper tilt shift effect. This is the kind of picture that works very well with the tilt shift effect. Now, if we go with this kind of picture, what we can do, uh, I'm going to show you how to um, simulate the tilt shift without tilt shift. Okay, so let's say you don't have Photoshop CC 2014. You don't have the blur gallery, which uh, is very useful as you can see it's really quick it's rendered by the GPU you have a preview it's really nice you can all you can even save the um, the result as a layer mask um, in, a, in an alpha channel if you want but yeah I digress if I go on the background I just click the background I'm going to duplicate it with Control J okay so this is going to be base and this is going to be blur just renaming 
uh, so it's a bit more um, it's easier to to find out so on the blur layer the one that is on the top what i'm going to be doing is filter blur so i'm not going to blur gallery uh, let's say i don't have uh, the last photoshop version i have like photoshop cs5 something a bit old what i can do is use lens blur lens blur uh, has been there for a while now so let's click on more accurate so it's yeah a bit prettier and with a radius of something silly i don't know 100 okay so it takes a while to render so i'm going to disactivate the preview and i'm going to click ok and as you can see the performance is, is is a bit different okay it doesn't take too much time but the preview is a bit tricky to get so now it's all blurry and what i want is um to be focused on the on the subject which is the old man in the center of the picture so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a layer mask with this button here okay so this is a layer mask and i'm going to use a paint brush with a size like this so on a pc to adjust the brush size you can do alt right click from left to right on a mac it's going to be Control alt left click to do left to right and to be able to change the brush size you also want um, the size to be not too big and the hardness to be zero percent so we've got a really high feather if it's too hard like this well the mask is not going to be pretty i tell you so let's just switch to 100 percent and this is being done again with alt right click and instead of going left or right you go up and down and this is how you change the size and the hardness okay so i think yeah like this is going to be good because my mask is visible it's all white so i need to switch to black so i can erase the mask and now as you can see i can change the way we interpret the photo so now it's interpreted as if it was a small depth of field even though it was a very sharp image but i have a blurry version on top of it with just a small brush in the middle to simulate the tilt shift effect is not as good as the proper tilt shift effect but as you can see we are very close so you can achieve your own tilt shift effect by using a lens blur that you put on top of it you could even do several masks with several values of lens blur uh, at different parts on different parts of the picture if you want to go crazy and really work on the detail the details you can do that this is with just one layer one is sharp one is blurry and the one that is blurry i can use a layer mask to reveal uh, the part of the picture that i want to be sharp so it's very simple and it's a way to create tilt shift without using tilt shift so this is at least two methods on how to work on depth of fields and manage a tilt shift effect i hope you will find it useful for your pictures don't forget you can uh, go on my website use the link in the description down below to download the source files uh, please have a browse on my website where you can find my portfolio and my other workflow uh, tutorials and also premium tutorials uh, for example right now we have the art of portrait retouching black and white this is a workshop on photoshop to create beautiful black and white portraits don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get all the other tutorials you will get a notification i try to publish a tutorial once a week and one in french and one in english uh, i hope you found it useful don't forget uh, to ask your questions in the description down below and i'll see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>